Now we've had a conversation in, in the previous hour we were talking about so this storm of uh, housing and the housing program by the government. Yesterday as we were having the conversation about the depreciation of the shilling and the performance of the economy, we again talked about debt as well has been a big issue. The revenue targets versus revenues realized has been a big issue, a big conversation. Kenya Revenue Authority not meeting its targets. Yes, targets that have been set that are very high, revenues not being raised as much as you expect them to, and getting into a financial year, uh, end of a financial year, and seeing that you have not raised as much as you wanted to raise, and yet you budgeted for all these things. So you ended up having to borrow so that you can foot the budget deficit. So there are all these issues that are happening in the country, and we want to open the phone lines now and ask you to call in and talk to William Samoy Kipchirchir Arap Ruto, PhD, President of the Republic of Kenya, Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces of the Republic. Mm -hmm. Dear Mr. President, talk to him. What is this one pain point that you think is a big one that he needs to know about? Or even what would you tell him? Would you tell him, Dear Mr. President, Fanya Evi, take a break, take, take a holiday. Dear Mr. President, forget about everything else, address this one. Or Dear Mr. President, Wemben yule wule. Kanyaga na uo mtindo uo huo. Yes, na weke gear ambaye amba inastahili hey. yu bio. Kiku yuzu tse negea kuguruku. That shoe hmm. belongs to that foot. Hmm. As in it fits. This is it. Okay. You, you are good. Hmm. Uh -huh. So what is it? 0719-012- 600. There are very many things, City. Mm -hmm. You don't even know where do you begin if you are to speak to if you are to speak to the president today and he called you Wanamuga. Kuja, my friend. Tuange. Bobo unaona mambo ikiandaje? Ambia mzee, hii kazi sijui kwa nini watu wanaitaka. Kile kazi ni nini? By what do you mean wewe? <laughs> yes, mimi sielewi because hii kazi ni ngumu na ni shida. But ingawaje uh, mara nyingi, mm. Some of these things are better said in Kiswahili. Eh? Yeah. But let me start with the English language. Sometimes you just bite the bullet. You know what you need to do. So just do it. He'll tell you that's what he's doing. And I'd say that is not what you're doing. He'll tell you, you know what, eh? Because you've you've heard I've heard the president several times he has said what we have lacked in this country for some time is a decisive leader. Somebody who wants to bite the bullet and make the tough decisions. And I am making those tough decisions. And, uh, they are tough, they are painful, but somebody has got to make the decision. That's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. He'll tell you that. He'll tell you, We are hurtling towards shortage, crisis, urban crisis. We must do something about it. Uhuru tried, he was taken to court, he abandoned the move, he focused on BBI. Kibaki had tried putting the house in order, but he had too many balls up, up in the air, he didn't get it done. I'm the guy who's got to get this thing done. If I don't get this thing done, now, 20 years down the road, we'll be in a crisis. Yes, and I'd say, mm. that is not what I'm talking about. Okay, what are you talking about? I'm what saying? I'm talking about mm. is not the buildings. I am not talking about the roads. I am eh. not talking about new projects. Mm. No, no, no. Resigning. I am, no. <laughs> By all means, don't. You are elected. Eh. Stay at work. What I'd be talking about is do what you know needs to be done. Not talk about what you know people believe you should talk about and how you should sound when you are appearing to mean what you say. No, 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 not that. Get it done. Get it done. And if there are people who are not getting it done, because you get information, mm. then get rid of them. It's not complicated. It's not complicated. Get rid of a couple of people, it will be understood. You mean business. That's a difficult decision. Yes, they may have been part and parcel of your electoral team and they helped you get there. Mm. But it wasn't because they like you. It's because they hoped to benefit. Mm. If they haven't benefited by now, tough. There are things that need to happen there. 53 million Kenyans who actually need to get the service mm. that your office is at the helm of offering mm. and it's not being received. So it's simple. 
the 53 million versus those few people who are around you. They are not the ones who elected you. It's these others who elected you. And they feel they are not being served. If they feel they are not being served, there must be some truth to it. So something is wrong and you know what it is. Now that is what I mean. Sort that one out. Mm. Because these things don't happen on their own. There are people whom you work with who are guaranteeing that things don't get done the way they should. Get rid of those people. <laughs> You see, I, I normally like likening some of these things to other experiences. Mm. I like what CT say. Mm. When you when you have a prob a physical problem, physiological issue, you go to Dr. Abby. Yeah, Abby. <laughs> then doctor says, let's do a test. Mm. Right? There's a physical manifestation of this problem. Yes. You have malaria, you will have a headache, you will have fever, you will have joint ache, etc. etc. Mm. Yes? Okay. Mm. Doctor says, let's do a test. We do a test, go pull blood, whatever we come. Mm. I say, okay, there's malaria in your body, mm. right? And it is affecting your function here, 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 and here. Can't see clearly, you're tired, etc. In what, and this is wrong, isn't it? Uh -huh. It is bad for you. Uh -huh. In order to get you on the path to health, this is what we need to do. Come for three days, take injection, swallow this for the next whatever, do a one dose, then eat your fruits and vegetables and build up your whatever. Those are clear things that you need to do, right? Yeah. Do you ever hear the doctor saying, actually, you know what? How about, let's not give you the medicine. You go run around in the park, you know, expend whatever little energy you have left and just run around and see what we can do. Uh, maybe think about, you sit down and think about your problem. Or how about I leave you here and not give you the medicine and I go now see uh, other patients. That's exactly what it looks like what's going on here. You've done the test. You know what the problem is. But we do not see that there are certain things that are being done. Case in point, look at it today. We've been talking about reducing the amount of money that is spent across board. Mm. Recurrent expenditure kind of thing. Whereby he, the president himself, said we're going to mop up 300 billion shillings from here and there. Have we seen that the 300 has been mopped up? <coughs> the, the, the Auditor General in this report today, what mm. has she told us? That you know what? Some 500 and something people are working at the National Treasury. Just one department. The mm. National Treasury. Mm. And they over and above what has been recommended. Over mm. and above what has been agreed on. Yeah. Now imagine if we saw just that one action. Whereby you look across board and you cut the fat. And you say let's work with what we have. Mm. Just that. How much money would you be able to mop up? And let's not even talk about things that, like, that are so complicated to be done. This is one thing that you can actually do. Mm -hmm. If you say, okay, we need to save top priority spending. And these are just from reports that we've seen over the last one week. Non-priority spending, 67 billion shillings. Mm. <laughs> if you say, okay, guys, how about we all sit right here, sit behind your desk. I'm not even asking you to sit for eight hours, five in a day. Do your work. You don't have to be jumping up and down. How much would you be able to put together? A lot. A lot. Mm. And that's what I'm saying. Take the injection, swallow the pill, get the work done. When there's a cancer in the body, the, the surgeons don't sit around and pussyfoot about, oh, shall we cut this thing out? Eh. Or let's see if we can talk to the tumor if it's ready to come out tomorrow. No, cut it out, get the thing, let's go. And it's that implementation that's that we are needed. not seeing happening. Let's go to the phone lines, 0719-012-600. Dear Mr. President, what do you want to tell Mr. President? Michael Mutinda? Good Hello. morning. Hi, Michael. How are you? Uh, good morning, Eric. Good morning, CT and uh, Du. It's a pleasure. Um, yes, I, I think the discussion is timely. Mm. And this is what I'd like to tell the President. Mm. First and foremost, and I want to approach this from a philosophical point of view, the current president came in through what people have said prayers. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the concept of leadership, who is the source? Where does it begin? Mm -hmm. Leadership belongs to God. Mm -hmm. He's the source of leadership. He's the one who defines it. And that's why you talk about service. Mm -hmm. And for me, looking at what we are going through as a country and um, having this opportunity to talk to the president, mm. I'll just tell him, look, the same God that you prayed and you said he gave you this power mm. is the same God you need to go back to. 
and ask him, how should I do this leadership thing? Mm. Because as it is right now, it's not working. So your He's advice to him standing. is go back, go and pray. Go, actually repent. Because okay. he's missed the way. That's clear. Mm. He's to repent, go back to him, and say, I've missed the way. And come and apologize to us Kenyans. Mm. Because what we are saying, Abba Father, I've got four children. Mm. And I'm determined not to live a Kenya. Like the one I'm experiencing to my children. Mm. Come what me. We must go back to the source. Yeah, and the source here is God. Okay. And we ourselves, I like what we were talking, saying earlier, the people. You see, the God factor is in our constitution. The God factor is in our national anthem. Mm. So we can't run away and think we can think about leadership outside of him. Okay. Obviously, if as a citizen we are dissatisfied, how much more is God himself? So the first step is for him to go back. But for us as citizens, because I belong in a group of people who we are just sick and tired. Mm. And like we said earlier on, something is changing, something is shifting. Mm. And some of us have already shifted and saying, enough is it's enough. enough. We shall stand and ensure we have a better country. Mm. We cannot be working and somebody is taking our money, mm. misusing it. Mm. The philosophy of leadership that existed in this country, just supporting what City has said, has come to an end. It has expired. <laughs> it's not serving us. We have to change the philosophy. Yeah, we have to good. change the thinking. And that is the revolution thinking that we need in our, in our, in our thinking and also guys to become. Because let's, be, let's become the change you want to see. Okay. That's it. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Michael Mutinda in Roisambu. Naftali in Kisumu, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm very fine. Speak to the president. Dear Mr. President, mm -hmm. just make sure that companies are working. Kenyans will find jobs themselves, and they will have to build the houses that you are claiming that you will build for them. They will build for themselves. Mm -hmm. Just to remember the during the regime of uh, 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 President Moy, mm -hmm. we had so many. We had a lot of companies, and a lot of people were employed. And like today, whereby whereby you are unemployed and you are instead of sympathizing for them you are imposing uh, <coughs> imposing goals imposing impossible goals to them mm. you will make them tired so mr president i uh, check on job opportunities yeah. instead of building houses in fact uh okay that's what i can say thank you naftali Thank you. Have a, good Have a great day. You too. Yes. Samson in Kisumu, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Speak to the president. I'm, the, I'm very fine. Mr. President, when we were burying uh, Mrs. Dedan Kimati, you said that it would take two months to have the late Kimati out. Please, use the Israelis. They bring those sophisticated machines. They scan Kimati's grave they'll find him buried with the handicaps mm. and it should be done that is one mm -hmm. two the country is misfiring from all the cylinders mm. all along i've never heard we having diplomatic tips with our neighbors this time around the congolese are not happy mm. the tanzanians are saying different things mm. our neighbors uganda are doing the pipeline from Da mm. and uh, the Northern Corridor mm. is our lifeline. Mm. Please, Mr. President, recalibrate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samson. Amos. Yes, good morning, Tim. Good, good morning. morning. Now, uh, what I will tell Mr. President mm -hmm. is to bypass all the middlemen, the CS, the MPs and the rest. Please come back to the, gr to the ground as you came when you are campaigning. Mm. Come and hear what we have to tell you. It's not a must that you have to use your thorax to lead us. We are the one who put you there, even though some, uh, some of us never voted for you, mm. but at least you represent us. Mm. Uh, case studies in the housing finance, uh, the housing tax, whichever levy, I don't know how to call it. Housing there are levy. several people, mm. yes, there are several people who are, who are having land, mm. but they are not able to develop those lands. Please make it affordable for us to access the building materials we build our own houses. You talk about the creating of employment. Now, how do you create an employment for people to just go and uh, 
and uh, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and skuma the wheelbarrow in the construction site for two years. Mm. Then after then, where do they go? Mm. We have professionals who really need those uh, jobs. So if you just employ them, uh, like now you go to Kibera, after like two years, the construction site is over. So where do you take them? Do you carry them to Kisumu? Make the economy work. We'll create jobs. We'll employ ourselves. And, and we'll build your okay. We'll build our houses. Thank you. And uh, just like you said, when you go, let's say, to Amas Island, you don't have to go to a place like a Kajado town to build flats mm. so that you bring people from the, uh, from the rural to come and stay there. Why don't you make those people in the rural... Uh, give them the incentives to build their houses in the rural setup where they can stay. Why do they force us to go to towns to stay there? Okay, thank you, Amos. Well said. James in Nairobi, good morning. Good morning to you guys. Good morning, morning man. I like, I like enjoying this. In fact, you made me come to the office every day and morning to just enjoy this uh, show. Thank you very much. I like the discussion today. Mm. And I also like the discussion that was there yesterday. Mm. But if I was to talk to the president, I will simply say, uh, just uh, what he needs to do right now is to cool the political temperament. Otherwise, Kenya is taking off in the right direction. But mm. the politics just like uh, in a letter giza kwa kila kitu. So if I think he can do the inevitable, get Raila on the table cool the temperatures, make investors not to flee, and then continue with the, with the discussions. Otherwise, like you say, mm. somebody has to make those bold moves, mm. and he is doing it. This is going the Kagame way. Mm. Nobody liked it at the beginning, but it will be beautiful at the end. Thank you. Thank you, James. Francis in Mwea. Hi, 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 how are you? Very well, thanks. How are you doing? How is Mwea? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Titi. Yes, habari bwana baraka uko mzima lakini? Mimi niko salama. Yes. You just I'm um, here on the ground I've learned a lot. Yes. Yeah. Even with the ongoing changes by the government. Yeah. For me if I were to get the chance with the president this is what I would say. Mm. I know there's a big challenge we have with right now there's a collection issue in terms of the target they have for taxation. Yeah. And they're trying to increase the tax base. Mm. We, we've seen the changes that have come also with the eating that is going to affect even the agriculture sector which I've heavily invested in. Mm. So for me what I'll tell the president is that uh, you know sometimes even when you bring on policies, mm. uh, sometimes there's an issue of capacity. Mm. When you look at farmers, the farmers in Kenya you cannot compare them to farmers in Europe and in America in this way. Mm. Um, the farmers in America are able to do what we call the balance sheet and income statement. When you look at the farmers in Kenya, for them, they know that I've made a loss when I have no money in my pocket. Mm. So they work on a cash flow. When I have a lot of money, I'm making profit. Because they don't do what we call the analysis of a balance sheet and um, an income statement. Mm. So even when you bring on board the use of things like eatings to farmers, it, they don't have the capacity to be able to even use that and even know how to understand the simple accounting uh, principles. Mm. So for, for me, I know the, the, the issue with the housing finance is the housing levy, the housing uh, project uh, is because of the housing levy, which has been heavily been put on the employed people. Uh -huh. And the government has been trying to increase the tax base. Because now if, if the tax base is not increased, the salaried sal people are the easiest way to collect taxes. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Francis. Have a good one and all the best yeah. for this new year. Thank you so much. Asante sana. Frida in Nairobi. Good morning, CT. Thank you for this show. It is very uh, insightful. Mm -hmm. For my side, I'd say about education. Mm. I'm a mother mm. in uh, the current junior high school, yep. the pioneer to accredit. The education system, children are really suffering. Mm. And when we prioritize housing levies and uh, building houses and when our education system is shambling, mm. I'm asking the president, please sit down with the Minister of Education. Mm. Analyze the issues the children are facing in school. Mm. People are going to school very crowded. They are crowding in classes. Teachers are, are not enough. The books are not enough. And uh, we expect our country to grow, please. We are messing up a generation. Mm -hmm. And as a parent, I feel bad. Because if I earn money, I would take my child to the, to the other system. Mm -hmm. But now, as it is, please. Even these issues they are looking for, the children who have not reported uh, in high school, 
how the, the bursaries have become political. You have to queue. All this money, can they be put in one, like in a ministry? And instead of distributing bursaries, since they be channeled to all the schools mm. and the children can access their, their education freely. Thank, Thank you, Frida. You. Thank you very much. Eric in Nairobi. So now let me address Mr. Freddy. Something Mr. wrong with your line, Eric. Hello? Uh, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me now? Okay, let's try now. Okay. Allow me be brief to Mr. President. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, I don't know where you get your battles from, but on ground things are totally different. I applied for my ID from November. Mm -hmm. Right now it's January ending. Actually, it's February. Huduma Center still talks of two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Mm. If we can't get basic rights like national identity cards, passports are not coming out all the way from last year, in yeah. April. Yeah. Uh, a citizen right now is not loggable in. Mm -hmm. One can't even renew the driving licenses. Mr. President, these are the things we are having on ground. Mm. Before talking about housing levy, you can't disrupt an entire system. That runs every single Kenyan's day-to-day -day activity. And you're busy saying that you're having our interests at heart. Why spoil the things that are available that were built by the former people through hard work and different things? Mm. Even if it's modifying mm. the system, why spoil the one which is currently assisting? Mm. We are feeling a bit inconvenienced by everything. Why shut all systems down in the name of now we stay pending, waiting for things which we haven't seen? Well said, A Eric. day counts for everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Eric. Blackwater in Mombasa. Hey, morning, gentlemen and, la and a lady. Good morning. Good morning. All I can tell the president, he's a very smart guy. And when a smart guy decides to screw you up, they know what you're doing. <laughs> I can just say he's a letdown, yeah. and he's letting us down as a Kenyan people. Mm. And it's not like he doesn't know it. He knows what he's doing. Are you saying, he, are you saying right he's here. deliberately we, letting us down? I will tell you, I, will, I can say that categorically, yes. Mm -hmm. Because, listen, if the common person can see it, are you telling me he can't see it? Mm. When we have a situation where we say the governor... The last governor was fictitiously holding the dollar. What is the job of the governor? To strengthen your currency. Mm. So meaning that the last governor is doing the right thing. This governor is doing the wrong thing. Mm. How are we going to fix that? The dollar is still the same. When you try to buy something for $1,000, it's the same. Now it's, it was 100000 Now it's 170000 Who are you hurting? We had one guy there. Yeah. I know her personally. We had one guy there. Mm. And she, she was sugarcoating. Sometimes we need to say the truth. <laughs> the government is failing us. Let's say the truth. Okay. Thank you, Blackwater. Right. Have a good day. Okay, have a good day, guys. Cheers. All right. Let's take this break, take a look at traffic and weather, and then we come back and pick more of your calls. Speak to the president, William Samoy Kipchirchil Arab Ruto, PhD. Right? Mm. He has a sword, president of the Republic of Kenya and commander-in-chief of the, the Defense, Defense Forces of the Republic. What do you want to tell the president? He may be in a meeting. He will watch this conversation. Mm. All right. Dear Mr. President, that's the conversation today. You've heard the people and what they're saying. It's about listen. Listen to what we want. Ex create an environment that brings about the opportunities. The opportunities for jobs, the opportunities for income. With those incomes, then people will be able to invest. In, once they invest, they'll be able to even invest in housing. Okay. And then do basic services. The last caller. Um, was it George and he was talking about or was it Eric and he was talking about just a simple ID card we call it simple it's not simple a really. simple renewal of, of a passport your driving, your driving, driving license. license right and TSA <laughs> all these things and it's because of a disruption in the system and something not appearing to work and 
even the story this morning on on um, the rollout of this visa free conversation Kenya ETA Ruto's vision of visa free entry proves tricky for many there's a story here that talks about very many people previously there were many in African countries who just needed to arrive at JKIA get their passport stamped That's it. and that is what visa free was okay then there's a, a gentleman who is a uh, uh, quoted here called Adio, a Zimbabwean citizen living in Germany. Mm. He was not anticipating any issues at Bremen Airport when he arrived for his flight to Kenya earlier this month. But at the check-in desk, he was asked to show a document saying he had permission to enter Kenya. He was like, he started arguing with them, look, I'm from Zimbabwe, I'm going to Kenya. I don't need a pass uh, visa to mm. enter Kenya or mm. permission to enter Kenya. No. I've done these trips before. The German guys at the counter were like, <laughs> you do. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. Yes, you do. He had traveled a week earlier. <laughs> if he had traveled a week earlier, he'd have come. Mm. But now, nationals of Zimbabwe, along with some more than 40 other countries, including several from Africa, could arrive in Kenya previously, get a stamp on their passport, and enter without paying. So when Kenya announced it would be a visa free for everybody from the first of this year, Adio thought the same rules would apply. He scanned his phone to find the new details on entry into Kenya, realized visa free wasn't really visa free things that are done and then you realize as you go on is an oh, okay now okay so was that really visa free was the idea to be visa free to make people come or was the idea to create a new revenue stream what was it or was it a, a narrative that was being spun mm. and the consequences or the uh, uh, activation of that consequence was not fully thought, thought through because yeah. oh, yeah. we're having issues we didn't have before mm. exactly or was it something that was said on the fly and then the thought was that okay guys okay. here are going to make it happen as soon as i've said this like, are you listening to damn. me fix Ra it Raisa Ra mesema. Sasa nini how do we do it eh. and they 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 are what watakuja <laughs> and then on the first of january that's when they realized okay no how do we do <laughs> this thing <laughs> veronica in texas hello hey, hi eric hi veronica how are you Ah, I'm living in Zika, in city. Very well, thank you. I can see you. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm on a live in Dallas. Veronica, there's an issue with your line. Please try and call again. Try and oh, call back. Try and call back. George Numoja, hello. Hello. How are you? Good morning. Good morning to you. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I hope you're fine there. We're fine. Uh, my contribution is uh, our president needs to note that sometimes you don't fight a battle to win. Mm. Uh, if, for example, uh, the court has ruled that uh, the housing is unconstitutional, mm. I think it's good to sit down and listen to the Kenyans. What mm. do you want? Mm. Uh, the parliament also needs not to force things. Mm. I have seen they have forced things, they are correcting uh, what we call participation, mm. and then it's not working. So what uh, our President Ruto should note that some things, some battles don't fight win. Mm. So Kenyans are suffering. 1.5 for the... Imagine you're building a house which you will not stay. Mm. Eh? You build and then you're told to deposit 300,000, which you don't have. Mm. So that means it's all about the rich people. Uh, the other thing is the land is for the government. Mm. You see, how do you build uh, your house on government land? So what, uh, what, uh, what about when it came to uh, this thing, when the, the, this regime uh, finished the, the work or they, they get away for uh, maybe 2027? What yeah. happened to the next regime? That's true. The lad so you, your message to the government? president is Ukichengu Atulia? Yeah, Ukichengu, Ukichapo, Ulatulia, Unasareda. Thank you, George. <laughs> Thank you. Let's hear from Susan in Nairobi. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Hi, dear Mr. President, I am shocked that your legacy is exporting young people from this country to go do very undignified labor in other countries. Our future scientists, our future presidents, our future innovators, are you really incapable of seeing that you're destroying their future, their children, their grandchildren? Mm hmm you want him That'll to stop. Thank you very much, Susan. Wanjohi in Mombasa. 
Hi guys, how are you? Good Very morning. fine, thank you. Hey, keep up, keep up the tempo. Sante. Sante. Yeah, now, uh, I think I should talk to the president. And I, I think, uh, let us call a spade a spade, uh, soon as one of the guys in Mombasa said. Mm. Uh, when this guy came in, he came in the premise of bringing down the cost of living. That was priority number one. The bottom-up economy was to bring everybody to go up. Mm. We didn't know that the bottom up was to raise everything up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the, you know, look, look at what is happening. You, you know, you guys, I'm telling you, ground. Mm. Everything has gone up. Fuel, you are increasing fuel. Fuel, when they came in, it was 85 a barrel. Now it is 81, it has reduced. They are increasing. Mm. Look at the Zambian president. The Zambian president, and he came on board, he said he, they were going to buy him some VXs. He said, are there, how, are, there, are there vehicles in the state house here? Are they moving here? They have tires, yes. Mm. Don't buy me. If you buy a VX, you buy with your own money. Mm. He could have had, had the Indian government to save money, not wearing a belt of 400,000, and another government is wearing a Rolex mm. of 4 million, <laughs> and then we found <laughs> the coffers <laughs> empty. Uh. <laughs> Let us talk the truth. Let us not beat around the bush. The guy knows what he's doing. He's failing the Kenyans, and time is that. Let me tell you, uh. you can cheat people, but down the road, you get caught up. He knows exactly what he's doing. I'll not borrow again. I have borrowed more than a trillion. Mm, thank Come you. on. Can, you, can people just see what is happening? Anyway, he has failed us miserably. The priority number one, he could have had a very in government. No vehicles even for, for government ministers for the time being that can be suspended so that they can be able to use that money to bring the cost of even to have subsidy back for the time being. Mm. <laughs> Leaving down and most of fear, because fear when it goes up, everything just goes up. All right. Thank now, you. Ab I Thank you, Anjohi. Thank you. Guys. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good one. Asante. Let's go to Ruiru. Paul in Ruiru. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, Eric, City, and Do. Happy, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, my word to the president, I have only two items to notify the, to tell the president. One is on the housing fund. He is so obsessed with this housing fund, and I am fearing this will be the biggest scam in this country in two, three years down the line. One, nobody is stopping him from building the houses. Please, let him stop burdening employees with his obsession mm. let him continue building the houses with the taxes we pay mm. we pay taxes we pay we pay we pay vat let him continue building the houses with those taxes we pay but please let him stop burdening employees number two mm. on the weekend in shillings when this regime came to office they told us oh the government uh, the former central bank was propping up the shilling let me ask with the weekend in Chile, who is it helping? Mm. It's not helping the normal monarchy the cost of living is high we are a net importer, importer country uh, neither is it helping the government. The debt, 50% of our debt is foreign. By letting the shilling weaken and dwindle down, who is it helping? I have a feeling that this government is working on guesswork. Mm. Clueless governors we have. What? The other thing, uh. Uh, the, 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 the foreign exchange reserves before Uhuru uh, left government, we were at four months of uh, import cover. If they were propping up the shilling with our foreign ex exchange reserves, currently our foreign exchange reserves are within three months. Uh, three months, uh, are fallen to three months of our import cover. What were they using to prop up the, the dollar? If uh, our, uh, the, 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 the number of months of import cover have... our Facebook page where we are live streaming the show and do mm. simple sum on Facebook this morning the art of I'm twisting the legislature to have your way uh, Mr. President will soon fizzle out consequently expect rebellion from all quarters to an unimaginable proportion this soon will not need Ryla to come to pass this time around okay George Mashuki says I will plead with the president to do the necessary our children are pulling out of university because there is confusion in funding there is a problem in universities now Mashogu is asleep. Mm -hmm. Abbas Saba says, Ruto, you're drunk and delude you're power drunk and deluded. You are not our Lord and Master. You are supposed to serve the nation and not be a dictator. Mm -hmm. Dear Mr. President, look into the issue, look into the cost of energy. 
it is unbearable now. Um, quite a number of things coming through. Mm. Chris Maura says, well, the president, I guess he's speaking to him, knows what he's doing and what results he expects. At times, plans don't work. Someone can tell him. Loyalty can be bought. Respect you must earn. Simple. Mm. Uh, Chris says, the president is trying everything possible to take our country to the next level, but some people want status quo. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nataka development, but Hamtaki kutoa taxes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Josagi says, Kenyans have turned to be chronic crybabies. Come on. No one is <laughs> red for slaughter. Kazaneni. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. It's quite some feedback here on um, what people feel about the state mm. of the country and the state of things and the way that things are going. And I guess it just boils back down to the conversation that we had earlier in the 8 o'clock hour, which was people are feeling as if they're in one room and those in government are in a different room. And they're talking at each other. And there's no understanding. Those in this Watu's room are sitting on the floor. Those in the other room, in the other room, mm. are dining in high tables and wearing the Rolexes mm. and expensive suits and telling them, <laughs> And and that's there's there's an issue here. There's an issue here that that those in power seem to be getting more and more increasingly deaf to. Mm. Yeah. And like Arne was saying, speaking to people who are in the senior levels of the administration, whether in parliament, whether in uh, cabinet, whether in uh, advisory roles, and you see how they respond to issues. They respond to issues like, you guys are just pestering. I mean, it's, it's Can't you get along with it? Five and six. Mm. Why well, do you have to keep bothering mm. us with these things? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're either just opposing it for the sake of because Cause you know because you you're not the one who's doing who's in the seat of power. We're the ones in the seat of power, so you chill, right? We beat you in the election, so chill. And everything else that's uh, coming, if there's noise coming from the ground from people making noise, ah, uh, those ones have been sponsored. People heckled the cabinet secretary for energy in his hometown. Hmm. And the response that you get from those around the administration were those ones that, you know, it's political. Hmm. You know, there's so and so who had brought in his people there so they can heckle so and, and try to drive a point. People heckle the governor, Kawera, and it, it extends to the president. And the president says, I don't want heckling. And people are like, no, no, no. You see, those are local Meru politics. It's, it's not about, don't, don't amplify that and make it at your national. No, it's local Meru. And it's, all, it's one after the other after the other. There's no point of saying, maybe they're saying something. Yes, and it isn't in one part of the country. Mm. You, it is spread out. It's happening. And it isn't, you know, there are times you could say it was an isolated incident. Mm. The moment it's two or three, there's nothing isolated about it. Mm. You see, the, when we said it in an earlier hour, that when somebody, in fact, it do said it, when somebody's purpose and intention is to actually help people, it is not difficult to determine that. You will see it. Mm. But when someone's determination is to be seen and to be thought of as being important and to be thought of and to be seen to be wealthy and to be thought of and to be seen to be powerful, that is also a, n not difficult to determine. Mm. What? This is my own musing. I, 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 I wonder, with all this supposed education and the whole, the level of education, formal education, that people who are now in positions of authority, whether in elected positions or in positions of government have, how is it that it doesn't occur to them to understand that when you seek to build the economy as you planned to do, there will be plenty for everybody. Mm. How do you explain a situation where you have people who claim to be millionaires and yet you don't see a growth in the economy, you don't see mm. a growth in industry, you don't see a growth in commercial activities? How are they getting their money? Because that's how people generate money. Mm. You create value, then you create wealth. You look at countries, China is a good example. Mm -hmm. China has what you call a huge middle class. 
Those people are wealthy. They're not just a middle class. Mm. They are wealthy. Mm. But if you look at China, you can understand where the wealth comes from. Mm. The growth in the industry, the growth in the commercial sector. Yep. The, 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 you name it. Look at any country that is considered to be a wealthy country. Look at India. Look at Korea. Look at Japan. What do you see? The growth of business, the growth of commercial enterprises, the growth of industries. Mm -hmm. And do you see rich people? You see many rich people. But the country is also rich. That's how it works out. Mm. How then do you explain a country where there are rich people and, and yet the country is poor? How does that happen? It's not, it shouldn't be. No. It, the, the staggering difference between the two mm. should actually not exist. If you are rich in a country that is poor and you are rich and you have a political position. Then you're stolen. Uh, clear. <laughs> because you have the means to. You have the ability to. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can't be someone who is an ordinary monainchi a year and a half ago and suddenly it is being said that you are a multi-millionaire. How? Where from? When the country is rich, everybody is rich. Mm. Everybody is able to make a living. Everybody is able to survive. Everybody is able to make ends meet. Mm. But when resources that are intended for building the country mm. is taken away through these nefarious ways, then you have a situation where the poor are getting poorer. Mm. And they will understand that they're getting poorer because somebody is ensuring they stay that way by deliberately taking resources that were intended for them and for the development of the nation they live in. Mm. And the interesting thing about this is that uh, even as that, as that situation continues to deteriorate, that there are some people who benefit from that situation. Yes. And in a situation where people are getting more and more frustrated with what uh, the situation, uh, what the, the, the environment is, you, you don't need to look very far. And that's the stuff that revolution is made of. You don't have to ask anybody to come out. You don't have to ask anybody to, uh, to then express or vent how they are truly feeling. Mm. It will happen with a force that you will not be able to control. And if you understand that concept, then it behoves you to actually say, you know what, let's fix this thing. Mm. Let's take the baby steps and let's start to... Nobody's asking you to do everything at once. But like I said, if the intent exists, the action will follow automatically. Mm. And people will know, you know, you say, at least we see this move or the other move. And then you'll be accepting of other things to come. Mm. But I think we ought to be careful that you're not going to have to look for anybody to rally anybody mm. to come out in revolt. No, no. It no, will no, happen. You will not. You will not. Even people who may never have even considered or entertained an idea of that nature, the problems that they face and understanding where the problems are coming from, we yep. feel no. Yep. <laughs> uh, no, I cannot. And if it's organically, like we said, like what we saw with the Women's March on Saturday. Yes. If it is organic... What we saw with the marches in Tahrir Square in Egypt, mm -hmm. in the other countries, if it is organic, and um, people say we are going to Divanji and we are not leaving. What we saw or in we Sudan. Going, or in Sudan. Mm. We are going to Uhuru Park, we are not leaving. It's not about ma running around, running battles. No, mm -mm. no, no. It's a mm -mm. sitting. Mm -mm. We have seen it in many countries across, across the globe. If it is organic, one day, two, two days, days, a week, Huh. you will not you be will able to not, stop it. You won't be able to stop it. Because it will grow. Mm -hmm. It will grow. It, you will not stop. It's just this one day people sit, people don't leave. Second day, people come up. All right, so let's go. Third day, people go. Fourth, people go. And, and that's it. And it gathers momentum. And you know why? Mm -hmm. They all have the same problem. Mm -hmm. They all feel the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Eight months ago, Ruben Kigame wrote an open letter to President William Ruto. It was published in the Standard. I want to read the excerpts of it. And he said, Mr. President, we let you become president. We gave you everything citizens can give one of them to lead them. But instead of leading our country, you have been destroying it systematically so that every day, every hour, we are treated to one more layer of destruction. And if we let you go on the same way you are, we will not have a country. But you can also be sure of this. We will also not have you as president. In this open letter, I want to warn you in love about four things that may bring your downfall sooner than later. And the sooner you turn around and do the right things, the better. 
I know you think that because you have the instruments of power, you can use them to prevent your downfall and to have your way. But it is that kind of thinking that would hasten the downfall I'm talking about. He says, I know that you read scripture, so I want to remind you that it is pride that led to the downfall of the brightest angel, Lucifer, the shining one. Pride brought Nebuchadnezzar, president of Babylon, down. You may recall that God made him eat grass like an ox and wet with the dew of the morning. It is pride that made Rehoboam, son of the wisest king of Israel, Solomon, to refuse advice from godly elders and prefer the counsel of his close, youthful associates, a.k.a. advisors. Rehoboam's rule ended prematurely, and the kingdom of Israel was unfortunately divided into two. In the New Testament, the best example I can give you, pride and arrogance, is that of King Herod, whom God struck by having worms eat him up. Great men and women, past and present, have been brought down by the sort of things that you and your friends are doing to Kenyans. Mm. You're a scientist by training, but I know that you have read or heard about an English playwright called William Shakespeare. In his play called Macbeth, Shakespeare says, A good and virtuous nature may recoil in an imperial charge, but I shall crave your pardon. Those are words that are coming not only from Ruben Kagame, but from many of those, those who have called this morning. Absolutely. Thank you for your calls. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for choosing this to be the way to start your day every day. As we get into February, have a lovely month. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day.